Hey Bass Geek here and today we're going to talk about the extremes of winter jig fishing. What is going on geeks? So we're going to talk about jigs. We're going to talk about the extreme. Why I pick two different types of jigs to do most of my work most of the time during the winter time. And they are to the extreme. Now, before we even get started on that, I wanna show you a place right here where it is just, it just looks jiggy. If I wanted to get jiggy with something, I wanted to start throwing a jig during the winter, this would be one of the places I'd absolutely start. Let's look at that bank. Now, one of the big keys during the winter time that I like is I like chunk rock, you know, big rock that's like the size of your head. It seems to warm up and hold heat, but I want that mud between them. I want some sort of dirt between those rocks. Rip wrap can be good, but it'll eat a jig too. What I like is those areas where those crawl dads can burrow in and they've got to have some sort of mud to do it. So I like big flat rocks. Why do I like flat rocks with some dirt or mud between them? Because 90% of the time when you have that, what you've got is areas for the crawfish to burrow between or underneath these big flat rocks that have a lot of surface area that are able to get direct sunlight and warm throughout the day. The bigger, the flatter the rocks, the more heat they're gonna absorb and hold. So pea gravel will work fine if there's a more pea gravel than mud, but look at this bank right here. Look at that flat rock all over that bank. You've got great, you can't really see it because of the leaves, but you've got great spots between it that allows it to have some places for the crawfish to burrow and hide. Now that's really, I'm gonna start looking for that sort of thing when the water temperatures get down past that 55 degree mark. Once we're in that area, that's that's when I'm gonna start looking for this type of habitat. You know, you can see all down this bank, right here, you've got some good bluff walls, but the areas I'm gonna pay closest attention to are gonna be these little transitions. That's got maybe a little bit of slide in it, a little bit of dirt coming down, some areas where those crayfish can get up underneath as far as they need to and burrow right there's a great looking spot and by the way if you haven't noticed it's also a great channel swing i love channel swings and the water temps right now are 47 degrees so we're full fledged winter fishing today okay so one of the things that i want to talk to you about before we get really in depth on the jigs is guys i appreciate the 100 percent watch squad man you guys rock hey you can't see it because i've got it on under the hoodie but by the way make sure you go check out the hoodies i've had this one for years at this point i mean six years and i wear it every single winter it is a great hoodie it has held up it is still super comfortable and warm but make sure you go check out the catch more fish shirt man that thing is awesome and it's only going to be on sale until the end of december so it's a limited time deal. Like I always say, the best way to support the channel is watching each and every video and being part of that 100% watch squad. Watch that entire video. You wouldn't believe how much it helps. Now let's talk about some jigs. All right, so what am I talking about when it comes to extremes of jig fishing in the winter time? Today, we've had a little bit of a warm up, And a lot of times when I talk about extremes of jig fishing, I'm really gonna talk about species too species matters but the extremes basically means the biggest jig with the most skirt and the finesse jig let me show you some examples so let's start on the big side like with this nickels football head that's a one ounce a lot of times i like the three quarters during the winter time three quarters ounce this is a standard lead jig we'll talk about this in just a minute and we'll also talk about this in just a minute some tips that i think right time right place gets more bites but this is a prime example 
a prime example of the extreme size. I want a big jig with a lot of skirt material to it. And I'm not gonna cut that skirt material either. I'm gonna leave that skirt material long because it doesn't move as much. It's much more subtle in the winter time. I don't want it fraying out there, moving. I want it laying down and just barely, barely moving when it's cold. Now, we're gonna talk about finesse jigs. This is one of my favorites, definitely right here. Now, this is a half ounce, a three eighths is great. You guys probably wanna look, if you're fishing from the bank, for that quarter ounce jig. So this may not work for you. I think this is a half ounce, but from the boat, a half ounce, a lot of times because we're gonna be fishing a little bit deeper, is gonna be a great, great size to start with. That three eighths ounce sometimes is a really, really great uh, fall rate, depending on how deep you are. This Omega jig has really caught my eye. This is called the Salvation. Now this is in Missouri Crawl, not really a color that I would throw too much up here in this clear water, but I love the way you can see how it sits and that hook will stand straight up. We'll talk about trailers in just a minute. A ball head jig, a traditional finesse ball head jig, and I'll put links into some others. This is a heavy finesse, and this right here is one of my favorite colors. As you can see, it's the blue. I think this is Pond Scum Perch. I love a little bit of blue in my green pumpkin, and this is a great color. Now, like I said, guys, find you some smaller, some one quarters ounce. I'll definitely put some links in the description for some quarter ounce ball head jigs for you guys fishing from the bank. You're not gonna get hung up as much and we'll talk about retrieve a little bit later. This is something the skirts really trimmed down. You know, they've cut half of it away so that there's very little flow movement. It's more of a just vibration movement as you can see. And so the, the skirt's very thin. This is a great little jig on the other spectrum. So finesse jigs, these are two of my favorites. All right, let's jump back over to our big, heavy, big football jig. And I'm gonna show you what my favorite trailer is. And guys, I really do keep it as simple as you can possibly keep it. And what I mean by that is I keep it pretty much green, brown, black, white. And that is really it. And white is a special occasion jig color green brown black generally are going to be the ones i go to now when we talk about trailer guys in the winter time i keep it super subtle especially on a day like today it's 46 degrees in this spot we're sitting right here water temps oh pretty much 47 this good old big salty chunk some guys still like to use the pork trailers and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that i like this and the reason why i like it is because it has a little more flow. So you can see that thing, not a lot of action. I don't thread it up on there. I literally just hang it. And that's what I want right there. Now that gives it a nice big profile. So it looks like a big old crawdad out there just stumbling and bumbling around ready to be munched. Now let's talk about trailers on this little guy. Now this is why from Omega that I really love this Salvation jig. This little jig is kind of like a shaky head. So you screw it up on there, you push your hook up and you can see, man, it comes through easily, but it really makes it weedless. So when it stands up there, that bad boy, is going to come through some pretty gnarly cover. Now, forget the little thing there. I, I use this as a Texas rig rod too, so just saving my bobber stop. But all that being sa said, this is a great little jig that is gonna work real well for you guys from the bank too. And it's extremely compact, stands straight up because of that flathead. Great little finesse style jig for the winter. This is the rodent. Not a lot of action on this. As a matter of fact, a lot of times what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch these two appendages off. 
to make sure we get the least amount of action as we can. We want it to be super, super subtle. And guys, with your little finesse ball heads, again, super salty chunk. Junior, I'm telling you these things are so great. You grab this little bad boy and I'm gonna do it the same exact way. I'm just gonna hang that buddy, that little bad boy dead center. Now, if I want it more compact, I'm gonna thread it up on here, okay? So a lot of times with these, I want them compact, so I'm gonna thread it. And what you do is you just thread it up on and you come out that little side right there. Just, I know you can probably barely see this, right there. And then shove it up on. And now, We've got a super little compact jig. That's tight, I don't wanna go fishing. All right, let's talk about rod, reel, and line setup before we get into retrieve on these and when and where to fish them. So, rod, reel, and line setup for me, this is the Akuma Tournament Concepts. It's their all-purpose. This is a medium, heavy, fast action, seven foot. You can see it goes from 3 sixteenths to three quarters. So I can throw quite a few different things on this. Now I've got the Helios SX, which has been discontinued. I will put in a updated reel that will do the same thing. So of course, anytime I'm bottom bouncing, this is gonna be a high speed reel. So I believe this is a seven, three to one. Now, as far as the line goes, when I'm throwing a finesse jig, even though I'm throwing it around rock, I'm still going to throw it 90% of the time, 12 to 15 pound, 100 or pro 100 canine line. Guys, you know I love my canine, and that's what I'm going to throw these little finesse jigs on. All right, so now let's talk about the big boy jigs. What are we going to throw our big ones on? This is my Akuma psycho stick guys this is a heavy seven five it'll throw all the way down to a quarter though so it's got a super great tip it is a fast tip but you can throw all the way up to one ounce on this bad boy which this is a three quarters right here and by the time you put like an ounce jig on which i don't throw a lot the ounce jig but it does happen three quarters tends to be my go-to on this and this is my reel, again, the Helios SX. Love these reels, hate that they discontinued it. And let's see, this would be the same speed. That is an 8.1, so both of these are 8.1. Again, I'll put in the description a comparable reel to this. Really good reel though. Now, line on this, bigger, bigger jig. Generally, I'm throwing 15 pound test to 17 pound test, Pro 100, so the 100% fluorocarbon from canine fishing. So remember what I told you about watercolor. I'm generally going to throw a jig and start fishing a jig pretty, you know, I don't have a lot of, there's not a lot of places where bass are gonna hide down this bank. And crawfish are the same way. They're gonna hide under these rocks but they're gonna come down, especially with the water dropping, they're gonna come down a little bit deeper to the edge of where the sunlight is penetrating. And on a day like today, when it's cloudy, even with this clear water, you can fish a little bit deeper. That's when, on a day like today, in areas like this, so you can see we've got some big flat rocks, we've got some mud and dirt, some earth in between it, this is my big bass area. Channel swing, this and these same types of points that maybe have a rock vein in it. That's the sort of stuff you wanna throw in the days you wanna throw this big, big jig on. We even got a piece of wood over there which makes it even better. So let's talk about retrieve. Guys, if it's over 50, I'll put a hop or two in it. If I'm having to come over a tree like that, I'm gonna put a hop in it. 
But other than that, it's drag, drag, drag. Below 50 degrees, drag, drag, drag. I'm going to slowly drag this jig, small, short intervals. And I'm gonna tell you guys on the bank, you know, I always tell you to hop a jig slowly, tiny little hops. I mean, hops that you're not gonna notice and you're gonna dead stick it a lot of times. So that jig, you're going to hop it up, hop it up. It's like a cold water jerk bait. Count to five, Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Then barely drag it or hop it again. All right, so the finesse jig, I'm gonna tell you where it really shines are those tighter crevice areas where the rock, there's not a lot of gaps and mud between the rocks. I mean, it's gonna catch fish anywhere on any type of bank. But for me, it's a little bit better when you have high sun. Now I will say this, unless you have dirty water, one of the things that I feel like with a jig, I almost treat a jig like a hard bait. So unless I've got some cover, something for the bass to hide in, some cloud cover, uh, dirty water, a lot of times that I'm going to soft plastics in that case. Or if I feel like everybody and their mom is throwing a jig. Now, when it comes to the ball head retrieve or the finesse jig of any type, it's gonna be the same exact thing. When I talk about a retrieve, I am not hopping. Unless like right there, I was coming across something and I just didn't want it to hang up. I'm feeling, I'm counting rocks as they say. I'm feeling every rock. I'm pulling it a foot at a time at the very most. And when it really pulls free of a snag, I'm stopping. I'm gonna let it sit there and I'm gonna drag it again. Remember what I said, above 50 degrees, I might give it a few hops because there's definitely gonna be some small, especially if you have a small mouth in the area. And that really brings us to the types of bass. So like if I'm fishing for small mouth or spotted bass 90% of the time, that finesse jig is what I'm going to throw. Now, if I'm focusing in on large mouth and I really want a big bite, that big bait is what I'm gonna throw. Now, just remember that big bait is gonna get you big bites, but it's not gonna get you numbers. This little thing can possibly pull down the numbers along with some really good bites. Ooh. There's one. And the jig pays off, gentlemen. And the jig pays off. And this is exactly what I was talking about. That's pretty good, and he's digging. Come on, little buddy. Yeah, that's a good one. Get you around here. Look at that. Again, I just proved my point. Finesse jig in and around those tighter rock formations. There you go. How you like them apples? That, of course, boy, that bass is cold. He's making my hands cold. That, of course, is the Omega Salvation. Good looking fat heavy bass it's getting back in the water all right geeks so if that don't prove my point i don't know what does that fish was literally just off if you remember what i said the edge of visibility is where i cast 10 feet to 15 feet below it is where i fish and that little finesse jig right there around the rocks tight you'll notice tight seams finesse jig small seams small crayfish big crayfish can't fit in that anyway all that being said so that bass even in 46 degree water bit in about five feet of water just past the visibility line 
and he held on to it, but he did not let it go. Try this technique out this winter, jig fishing in cold weather, drag, drag, sit, pause. You bank anglers, tiniest hops you can get away with coming up so you don't get stuck and dead, stick it, let it sit, okay? All right, so as always, questions comments in the comment section below guys 100 percent watch squad and don't forget go get those shirts it helps the channel 100 percent watch squad though easiest way to support us links in the description as always questions comments in the comment section below you guys know i love to talk about fishing with you like it if you like it don't forget to subscribe and as always ring that bell so you get the notification 100 percent watch squad and you guys you guys rock